Welcome back to Ginger Man. I find myself down here in the Scottish borders at the village of Southerness. We're at the seaside. It's a beautiful place. I'm down here for a few days with my mum and Davy. Um, we're so south into the Scottish borders that we're actually past England. There's a wee body of water over there and you can see it over the water. I'll explain as we walk around. But anyway, Southerness, show me what you got. Peace. <laughs> There's the Paul Jones Bar and Grill. So my first notice is, lots of things here are called Paul Jones. Is he a pirate? Sounds like a pirate. There he is, Paul Jones. I'm going to find out all about him. Now look at this, as you walk down from where our caravan is. You walk down here, you've got a beach with a big fantastic lighthouse. And it's a glorious day. Feels like summer has just started again. I'm full of energy, I'm full of, full of beans because I came here as a kid on holiday uh, with my mum and my sisters uh, and I must have been about 11 or 12 so it's been a while since I've been here 20 odd years, 25 years it's a while so I can't really remember it but I have flashes see over the water but I can assure you I can see over there and that there is England in the Lake District and look that's England over there all the way around it's bad luck to kind of get in it's privately owned by Lighthouse Leisure Caravan Company why well sometimes it's open I want to go in, it looks cool. Looking on a map, over there's Cockermouth. What a name, eh? Cockermouth. And no worries, pal. I'm just for Cockermouth. Getting those seaside salty lips. Oh, this is quality walking along here this morning. It's so quiet. It's a Tuesday morning. No one's about really. There's a salt tire right over the between the border. Looking back on Scotland, that's cool. I've walked quite a wee bit along here. Yeah. I didn't realise how far I was walking. I'm just powering along the beach. The walking surface of this beachfront changes every five minutes. It's interesting. Got all this shit that's been washed up. I think it's been washed up. Looks like it all just came in from the water. I wonder if there's any any interesting things in there to be found and seen and taken. I don't know. Right. I'm just going to walk along here a bit. As you can see, there's not much here. We're at this sort of cut-off bit. Now, look, there's that big hill I was just talking about. 
but I couldn't see anything about it on the maps or anything. And then this must be maybe Southern S Beach officially. Big massive beach, which I don't think I'm going to walk all the way along there because it looks uh, just looks like a big long beach. No much to see after you've been on the beach for a minute. You're like, ah, well, that's the beach. And I'm going to climb up these rocks. Oh, bugger. And see what. Ah, turns out I'm on a golf course. There's folk there. Kind of go this way, back this way. There must be Southern S Golf Course then. Nicely next to the beach. Right, back down here. I want to avoid this, this bit of path though, because it's soaking. Right, we're in adventure mode now. Golf course behind me. Water in front of me. Still this washed up bogginess there. Maybe I should just walk over the boulders. Good place to pick up big sticks though, if you like a big stick for walking. Loads of them here. All good, good bits of stick that have travelled over the water to get here. You never know where this has come from. Do you know what would be the best thing to find right now? A message in a bottle. Once I realised that was a thing that you could potentially find, I mean, it's maybe like a 0.5% chance, but that 0.5% chance is in my mind now. And if I found one, imagine finding it. I got a hair in my mouth. Imagine finding a message in a bottle mid filming an episode. Oh, that would be incredible. You'd be following it up, it would open up a whole new. A whole new universe of filming. Anyway, probably not going to find one. That stinks. Message in a bottle. Right, this is a fruitless task walking through this. I'm going to try and escape this. Oh, there's a bottle. A bottle of piss. Well, that's life for you. You go out looking for some little bit of magic and you get a bottle of piss. It really is life. This is what happens when you come to the unexplored lands of Southerness. I wanted to kind of walk around there, but I can see the golf course all the way up there. So I should have gone the other direction from the lighthouse instead of coming this way. Um, I wish I could just click my fingers and I'm back at the lighthouse, but I'll treach. I'll trudge back, maybe find the message in a bottle. Anyway, once I've stopped messing around, exploring, I'll get out my phone and I'll do a bit of discovering and learning about this area. I'm reckoning Romans, Pat came here, there was battles between Scotland and England happening here. I know there's a place called Castle Douglas, somewhere, somewhere up yonder. That's maybe for tomorrow's exploring.
Right, hey, I've just actually had about a half hour sitting there on the grass having my snack, had some pickled onion monster munch. I haven't eaten them in a long time. They were pretty good. Anyway, got the drone up and I think I walked in the complete wrong direction. It seems like I should have gone the other way. But that's fine because I got to find the stick and have a nice walk along here where I had my lunch and got the drone up. So, you know, I'm not complaining. I'm not complaining. But now I'm going to walk back that way and then, um, yeah, we'll find out more about this wee seaside village here in the borders. I was just thinking, look how much the tide's come in since I was here about an hour ago. The thing about this area is the internet's shocking, so if you're addicted to the internet, it's maybe not the best place for you. Every so often, you get connected. So I looked on maps and i seen that there's the John Paul Jones Birthplace Museum, there's the Paul Jones Pub. Ah. So he's a big deal around here and I don't know who he is, so I looked him up and this is what it says. John Paul Jones, born July 6, 1747, was a Scottish-born American naval officer who served in the Continental Navy during the American Revolutionary War, often referred to as the father of the American Navy. Well, there you go. And here he was born right here, in Southerness. John Paul Jones, father of the American Navy. And as you cross around Scotland, that is something that you start to begin to realise is the amount of Scottish people throughout that period of time. You could say it's the the, the Industrial Revolution or the Scottish Enlightenment, whatever happened, there are many figures who came from Scotland, went to America and made a worldwide name for themselves. And it's incredible to keep discovering more and more. There's another one added to the list. Actually, I think there's more people who visit the holiday parks here than there are residents of Southerness. But I'm going to guess the population of Southerness is around 300 people. Keep watching to find out. John Paul Jones. He definitely sounds like a pirate. Turns out he was the opposite of a pirate. He was a Navy legend. And the Navy would have been trying to stop pirates. I am jumping in the car because it says eight minutes up the road is the John Paul Jones birthplace and I'm going to go check it out. And then I'm going to come back here and I'm going to show you around this area of the, the park and everything. <sighs> I got in my car and it was roasting, my glasses steamed up and hey, it was a moment, I had a moment, but I'm good now. I'm good, let's go. Oh. Aye, I had a moment. Anyway, whilst I'm here and um, before I go to the John Paul Jones birthplace museum, I want to thank my legends, who without, I wouldn't have enjoyed a pack of pickled onion monster munch on the Southerness Beach this morning. It was perfect. Thank you, guys. If you want to be a patron, join the link below. Get them in the episode like these guys. Thank you for watching. Please keep watching. Peace. And there he is, John Paul Jones. And there's those flags connected. Welcome to the birthplace of John Paul Jones the father of the American Navy. I'm just going to have a wee walk around. I'm not sure I want to go in because I found out at the castle when I'm wanting to vlog and I go into the actual buildings it becomes really difficult. But what I am doing is I'm promoting it for you to come here sometime and check it out. Especially if you're American. This is a great spot. Learn about the history of your own navy, the American navy. Now probably, the, or is, the world's biggest navy. And it began. Well, we burn in here. <laughs> Best buddies. There we go, to commemorate the birthplace of one of America's first naval officers and a hero of the American Revolutionary War.
hidden little plaque behind the rock with the flags. Uh, in this cottage was born in 1747 a Scot. At the age of 13 he sailed across the Atlantic, later to join the American Navy in the War for Independence. He fought long, valiantly and successfully for the freedom of the American colonies. Through his exploits and his pronouncements on naval leadership, he earned a prominent place among the fathers of the United States Navy. His remains were returned by cruiser to America and placed in a sarcophagus in the crypt of the US Naval Academy Chapel as an inspiration to our young naval leaders of the future. That's pretty cool. There he is there. He's in a sarcophagus. I'm going to jump back in the car and head back to the site. Um, I'm going to go take Angus for a walk. You can come along and I'll show you around where I'm staying, etc. Let's go. Static. Oh. Angus, hello, hello, hello. Oh, he's a good boy. Hello, Spencer. Here's my messy little uh, room. Angus, is it good here? He likes it. I'm going to have a wee chill moment for an hour. Put the camera down. Then I'll bring you back and we'll walk Angus round the site and we'll talk a bit more about Southerness and we'll actually find out how many people live here but not in a caravan but actually in a house. Anyway, Angus, I'm going to have a lie down. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? I'll see you soon. You monkeys? Come on then. Paul Jones Bay. Got a wee pond. Nice views of this hill that I'm still sure I want to climb at some point. I need to go find out what it's called. Right, come on. Let's go. There's a big swimming pool and that in there. Loads of arcades, pub, restaurant. Get him on, Angus. And then we've got a wee shop up here for your everyday essentials. The main complex every night, there's a whole bunch of entertainment on. Guy last night singing was brilliant. Really enjoyed it. I had, had a carbonara, that was tasty too. Sporting fashionable sliders with red socks. We're back. Back back in the caravan. I've done some reading and I've learnt some stuff. The only landmark is Southerness Lighthouse, which was built in 1749 and is one of the oldest lighthouses in Scotland. So I'm just chilling on one of the oldest lighthouses in Scotland. It stands approximately 56 feet, 17 metres tall, and was decommissioned in the 1930s. That's a shame, two golf courses, and I found out the name of the hill at the back. It's called the Marlin Criffle. I hope I'm saying that right. The Marlin. The Marlin's just like a name given to any hill, I believe. Random hill, it can be in and above a certain foot. I can't remember the, tr the facts of it, but... There we go, it's called the Criffle, and it's at like 500 metres, so it's pretty big. It's up there with, you know, uh, West Lomond, I think. It's about the same height as West Lomond, so whilst I'm here, you might see a Criffle episode. Oh, hi, look. 
look at this. It's like a wee trip, you think, oh, someone passed away. And I'm thinking, it was a young person in memory of her friend, or for friends. Oh, this is where people have kept tributes to their dogs that have passed away. Oh. I also, like, I got this overwhelming sense of something because I love my dog so much and I'm here with my dog. So it's almost making me want to cry because there's nothing that makes me tear up more than dogs. Dogs dying is the saddest thing that can ever happen. I got some numbers according to the 2001 census. 170 people live in Southerness, so it's tiny. But over the summer, of course, because of the two caravan parks, um, the place is busier than it should be. But I still don't think it's busy enough around here for how stunning it is here. But it depends if people who live here want to keep it semi-quiet and peaceful. I'm sure in the height of the summer it's really busy. Because um, you're kind of on the border, so you've got Swiss of English and Scottish people coming. But this wee bit round here is a lovely walk, and then you can see the criffle in the clouds. What's this? Got another memorial bit. This it's a bit this isn't for a specific person, it's for people this one. People that be oh wow well, this is cool. If you just lost someone and this is a special place for you. Which I think these types of places are special to people because the seaside, the holidays, this is where people come to make memories. Come to make memories and all of these people here have been touched by the area. You know, just, when you come to these places, there is something in there. There's a, there's a, a happiness. Well, there was a happiness until I seen all these sad memorials. I'm feeling a bit blue now. Still haven't found a message in a bottle though. What I'm realising as well is the British seaside is not the powerhouse it once was where I think everyone in the UK at some point would have spent summers coming to the seaside. Even I grew up in the 90s going to the seaside but I think it was then when it really began to turn and people were more and more going abroad as affordable flights happening, all-inclusive holidays and I guess many turned their backs on these places which is understandable in some respect because we don't get the best weather in the UK but what we lack in the weather we gain in incredible landscapes brilliant people an incredible history there's so much more than just going on holiday for some sunshine Um, yeah them birds on the telephone line. I'm going to count them right now. I stopped counting but I'm going to say there's about 70, 70 birds on that. They're making an awfully din. There's arcades. This is the, this is the part of the place next to our place. This is the lighthouse leisure. I like that mermaid bar best pint in town. Criffle view, there yeah, it's there. I always say the clues are in the street names. Um, there we go, two caravan parks, a golf course and a lighthouse. And a legend from the American Navy. So another reason why I'm here, as to take a total swivel here, is I'm writing my latest panto. If you've been watching me since the start, you'll know that I write a panto every year for the Dalgetty players, who are currently, well, this coming week, on stage in the Carnegie Hall doing Wizard of Oz, whilst I am going to be writing their next panto for January, Puss in Boots. It's my final one. I've written seven, well, six. This is my seventh. And I'm trying to tie them all together. 
so yeah if you want to come come along get your tickets let me know or get in contact with the Delgate players um, but aye I'm going back to the caravan to do some writing you can come with me we're not finished yet hello Angus what are you after your dinner you hungry he's hungry so I've brought this here for inspiration this was the first pantomime I ever done back when I was 18 babes in the wood I was Friar Tuck um, so I'm gonna just right away I'm going through my characters right now but uh, aye oh it's raining now oh aye I recognise that white house So, I thought I'd come here to this wee spot here at the edge of the site to look at Criffle View and fly the drone um, as the sun is setting over Southern Ness to end my episode. Come back to me, baby. Come back to me. So my plan was to go down and watch the entertainment and film a bit of it, but you get copyright striked because they're playing music that I can't show, so my plan now is, I'm going to conclude after this, the sunset drone footage, I'm going to walk back down to the lighthouse because that is the focal point of southernness and conclude this episode There's a wee bit in the middle as well for tents and touring caravans so you can come here and camp because you know I love to camp Actually, see the hills of the Lake District. 
from here. I couldn't really see earlier across there clearly enough to see any shapes or silhouettes, but I can actually see the hills of the Lake District now. Really close, it feels. Anyway, I'm going to chill here for five minutes and just wrap this up. We can iron brew to toast the sunset. Myself a shell to take home. Well, what can I say about Southern Ness? What a place. What a beautiful part of Scotland. It's not it's not somewhere that you first think about when you think of Scotland, because you're almost in England. I mean you're practically are in England, but technically we're in Scotland. And it's as beautiful as anywhere in Scotland. We've got the Criffle Hill. We've got, I don't know what this body of water is called, I think it's the Solway Firth. And, aye, just this beautiful, beautiful coast. It stretches for miles. And right at the centre of Southerness is this incredible lighthouse that's just, it's like 300 years old and just standing there chilling. Anyway, thanks for watching. Southerness, you've been amazing. Peace. Well, it was a lovely to see you It's the end of the show Bring on tomorrow Where shall we go? Where shall we go? Say goodnight to the ginger man One last ice cream for the bearded man Pistachio